Okay, hello everyone. Um, we're going to get started, but first let me mention that I'm going to start off with a couple of slides. Uh, I promise I won't PowerPoint you to death, but I just want to say a little bit about data management plans. And then we're going to pretty quickly move into a live session where I want to demonstrate the DMP tool. I think that's a better way to show it. So let me get started with my slides. And you all should be seeing the how to write a data management plan. So if you're an investigator or you're part of a research team or you're considering applying for a grant, you may have questions or concerns about data management plans. During the next few minutes, we'll talk about what's a data management plan and why you need one, and I'll be occasionally referring to that as a DMP. What kind of information you need in a data management plan and how to get help creating the plan. And again, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat and I'll make sure that I leave enough time at the end to address them. Now, a data management plan describes what you're going to do with your data during and after your project. It's typically pretty short, usually two pages or so, so you really need to be concise. Try to write the plan based on how you would like to manage your data but keep the plan realistic. Many funders require you to submit a DMP as part of your grant application. And even if your funder doesn't require a DMP, you may want to review the types of questions asked in a data management plan that help you organize your project so you're not blindsided by these details later. Larger funders like the National Science Foundation or the National Institutes of Health may include detailed instructions for what they're looking for in your data management plan. And you should definitely try to follow these as closely as you can. But smaller grants may not provide as much detail. So in general, here are five elements that should be in the plan. Um, let's look at these elements individually. First, you'll want to know what kind of data will your project create. Start with a general description of the type of data, the format, the size of the files, how fast the files will grow, the software that's used to read, process the files, and protocols or steps that you'll use to create your data. How are you going to document your data? This is where you indicate how you're recording information during your project. Are you using lab notebooks, a survey instrument, or a special software to document your project? Sometimes a funder will ask about metadata schema, but unless that's specified by the grant, it may not be required. What's important is that you document your data. The data should be organized so that people working with your data, whether this is during or after your project, can easily find and identify your data and reproduce your project workflows. How will you manage sensitive data? Regardless of the sensitivity of the project or your data, you need to indicate where it's going to be stored, who has access to it, and how it's going to be backed up. But if it has PHI, which is personal health information, FERPA data, or proprietary data that might be used for a patent, then you need to provide even more details about how the data is going to be protected during and after the project and how you're going to comply with any restrictions that are based on the sensitive nature of that data. How will you manage your data at the end of your project? So where's your data going to be archived? Who's going to be responsible for your data at rest or in its archival state? What kind of repository will you use? How long will you keep your data? Now keep in mind that both the funder and Drexel retention policies can affect the retention length. And you can learn more about Drexel's retention policies for research output from the Office of General Counsel. I'll make sure I show you a link to that at the end of this session. Finally, how will you share your data if this is applicable to your grant? This question can be driven by the grant and publisher requirements 
as well as the sensitivity of the data. So for example, although you may not share all the data in your clinical study because it has personal health information, you might be expected to de-identify your results and share your data without patient names or other identifying information. This question also affects your repository choice because you'll want to store your data in a way that allows others to easily find it, access it, or reuse it based on your licensing and sharing requirements. Now, I know that some of your colleagues may have written data management plans and your departments use these, and that's totally fine. You just want to make sure that their DMP actually addresses the elements that you'll need to consider for your plan. Larger funders from the government are most likely to specify what they need in the plan, either in a grant description or a separate document from the agency or the directorate. But you can also obtain information on grant requirements from the DMP tool. The DMP tool is a free, open source online application that helps researchers create data management plans. It's currently managed by the University of California Curation Center. It includes templates for many of the large funding agencies, but there are generic template wizards as well that include a lot of the information that we discussed earlier. So at this point, I want to connect us with the DMP tool so you can see how that works. You can go to this link dmptool.org forward slash getting started. But I actually want to show you how you would get there from the Drexel's website. So bear with me while I go to our website. So hopefully you are seeing the Drexel University website. And that's at library.drexel.edu. If you go to our services page, you'll see that we have a research data management support link. When you click on that, it will take you to information about research data management support, including a brief description of the DMP tool. And there's actually a link to connect to the DMP tool here. So we're going to go with option one because Drexel University is affiliated with the DMP tool. When you click in that box and start typing, it will give you suggestions. In this case, the only suggestion is Drexel University, so we'll go with that. If you don't have an account, you can create one. Just type in your first name, last name, your email address, and please use the email address that's associated with Drexel University. And then enter a password. This should be between eight and 30 characters. Go ahead and accept the terms and conditions and create your account. I already have an account, so I'm just going to click in the password box and sign in. Now, the first time you sign in, you're going to see a dashboard. Actually, every time you sign in, you'll see a dashboard. But your dashboard will look a little bit different if you're a first-time user. You're going to see any DMPs that collaborators have shared with you. If you've actually created a DMP using a DMP tool, you would see that as well. And if anyone at Drexel University decided to share their DMPs with the entire organization, you'll see those listed at the bottom. Now, if you were working with a collaborator previously, and let's say you really like their data management plan, you can use that plan as sort of a template or framework for your next plan. What you need to do is just go to the box that says Actions for the plan that you like, click on the downward arrow, and then copy that plan, and you can revise it accordingly for your new data management plan for your project. But for this example, we're going to create a plan from scratch, more or less. So I'm going to hit the backward arrow and go back to the dashboard and click on Create Plan for a new plan. So 
So we're going to tell it the name of our research project. And I'm going to call it Food Systems Mock Grant. However, if you are actually creating a mock grant, there's a little checkbox you can use here that tells you this is for a mock project for testing, practice, or educational purposes. And that's helpful because you can actually share a mock plan, but when someone sees that this is checked off, they'll know that it's not a plan that you actually used for a project. It was just for demonstration or educational purposes. Next, you enter your organization. Now, if you're not working with an organization, and I will delete this temporarily, you can just type in a different organization or check the box that says no research organization associated with this plan. That's important because notice that there are asterisks next to all of these fields. So the field either needs to be completed or you need to make sure you have a check mark in the box next to the item that says that there's nothing associated with it because when you try to create the plan otherwise, it's going to gray that out. So I'm going to go ahead and put Drexel back. And again, if you didn't have a funder or if this was self-funded, you could click no funder associated. But I'm going to go with the National Science Foundation for this one. Now, most foundations or organizations only have one template in the DMP tool for that organization or foundation. In this case, the National Science Foundation is so large, it has several different templates you can use. So let me click on this downward arrow so you can see them. They don't have a template for every directorate, but for many of their directorates, they have a separate template. I'm going to choose to work with the generic template. So let me select that and go ahead and create my plan. So for your project details, this is where you would enter some information about the plan just to introduce uh, folks to it. And here it tells you that you can summarize your research project to help others understand the purposes of why you're creating this data management plan and why the data is being collected. So I'm just going to put abstract here to represent that information. And then you indicate the project start date and end date. So we're going to be really ambitious and start this project on Monday. And then my end date, let's say I'll make that a year from now. You would enter any ID that's associated with the funder or your organization. And if you have a grant number, this is where you'd enter it. Or you could enter a URL for that particular grant page. So let's do that. Now, before I click on Save, I want to point out the ability to get guidance. You can use up to six organizations to see what type of guidance they might provide for your plan. By default, the DMP tool provides its own guidance. And so it, I think it's a good idea to select that because it's general, but also very helpful. And usually there'll be a certain amount of guidance from whatever funder you're uh, applying for the grant from. But if you did want to use another university or organization, I just clicked on see the full list, they will give you a list of organizations that actually have guidance for different plans. It might be worthwhile looking to see what they have to say about different areas of the data management plan. So I'm going to click on Florida State, and I'm doing this a bit at random right now. Typically, though, you would check off 
an organization or a university that you knew had applied for a similar grant in the past and perhaps had been successful in the grant award. So let's just, I'll choose Florida State and I'll choose, let's say Harvard. And then you wanna make sure that you click on save so that you'll actually see their guidance as you work through the plan. The plan. If there are any contributors to the plan, such as someone who's responsible for coordinating the project or managing the project, or even the principal investigator, you would add that contributor here. So I'm just gonna type in a little bit of information. We'll enter the email address. Telephone number is optional, as well as ORCID. And this refers to a unique identifier for your collaborator. Uh, this can be really helpful, although it's, it's not required here, but it can be helpful to the, the, the funder. Um, it allows them to see information about the collaborator, such as other grants they may apply for, um, other research that they've done, their employment background, and so on. However, the ORCID ID is required for certain funders and publishers for the person who's applying for the grant, for the PI. You can actually add that information into your profile, and I'll show you where you can do that. Click on Edit Profile. And this is where you could enter your ORCID ID so they'd have that information. Okay, let's go back. So I will add their ORCID. And then let's say that this was the data manager. So I'll save that information and then it allows me to add an additional contributor. I'm then going to move on to the plan overview. So this tells me what types of questions will be asked in the data management plan. And typically it's going to be based on whatever template you selected and your funder. So again, I selected the generic template from the National Science Foundation. And these are the questions that they're going to ask me as I prepare my data management plan. So I know the type of information I need to gather in order to do that. When we click on Write Plan, this is where we actually start to fill in the information for the data management plan. So the first question they ask me are the types of data produced. And I'm not going to go through and try to add too much data here, but just enough data so that we can move on to the next question. So I'll just add data produced here. And as it states, this is where you're going to enter the types of data, physical collections, and so on. If you want to refer to some of the guidance that's offered, you can see that the NSF has added information here that you can refer to. However, the NSF, I find their guidance to be somewhat general. So for example, they tell you here that proposals for, uh, that you submit have to include a document called a data management plan, and it needs to be no more than two pages. And then they tell you the same information that is actually included in the DMP tool. They, they have the same questions here. If you were applying for a data management plan with a specific directorate rather than using the general template, there would be a little bit more information. And they provide that information for you in this link. However, the DMP tool actually gives you more guidance in these areas. So for example, for data description, not only does it tell me I need a summary of the data that I'm going to collect or create, but it also suggests that I consider how that data is going to complement or integrate with my existing data, that I want to indicate what data is going to be of long-term value. And when I'm actually selecting my data types, 
there's a difference between the type of data that you may or types of files that you may use for something when you're collecting it versus when you're storing it long term. So it explains that to you and suggests that you consider some of that information as you're answering this question. And it gives you resources that you can go to for best practices. In this instance is data one. So I'm going to save the entry that I made and then move on to the remaining entries on data and metadata standards. And as I go through these sections and move from more general questions like what is your data type and what type of metadata are you using, you start to come into areas like policies for access and sharing or reuse that are going to be very, very specific to different organizations. So you want to be somewhat careful if you're looking at their guidance because it might be applicable just to that particular organization. Let me take a look at Florida State and see what they have under data sharing. Okay, so some of this is somewhat general, but often what you'll find is that they're referring to their specific repositories, and so it wouldn't necessarily apply to you. Still, you can check and see what their guidance uh, contains because it might be something that you want to consider as you're writing your plan. So let me finish this up. And then finally we have our last question here about how the data is going to be archived and preserved. When I save my final entry, I can then choose to share it. So let's go to the Share tab. And by default, your data management plan is private. And you can see that that's the one that's selected. But you have the option of sharing it with anyone at Drexel or the general public. However, you don't have that option until you've completed at least 50% of the questions, which is why I wanted to go through all the questions that were listed there. So now I have the opportunity to share this again with Drexel or the general public. If there's someone specifically that you want to take a look at your data management plan, you can add them as a collaborator. The collaborator will get the permission of either a co-owner where they basically have the same permissions as you. They're able to invite someone to look at the plan or edit it or revise it. The editor can only edit and, uh, and read the plan and then read only is exactly what it sounds like. The only thing they can do is read it or enter comments if your plan allows them to do that. So let me submit. And to see what a finished plan would look like, you can create a cover sheet and you can view the plan in a number of different formats, including as a Word doc or a PDF. So I'm going to select the PDF and download the plan just so you can see what one might look like, although this is going to be pretty sparse. So here's my cover page. And then for each question they ask me, any data that I've entered. And of course, I can always go back and edit this. I can download it and share it with others. Once the plan is completed, I can submit it along with my grant proposal. So let's take a step back here. Now, there are a couple of other things that I wanted to show you on this DMP tool. For instance, when we first looked at the dashboard, I mentioned that you can look at any plans that were shared with you by Drexel 
or another collaborator, or you would see plans that you created yourself. But there's also the opportunity to see public plans, okay? And these are plans that anyone who's a member of the DMP tool can share with the general public. So I just clicked on public plans. Now let's say you're interested in creating a data management plan for a topic. And I happen to know that Cornell has a plan out there on food as medicine. So I'm going to type in food as medicine and see if I can find their plan. And it tells me there are no records associated. So often, even though you know the topic of the plan, you may have to enter very general information. So I'm just going to enter food and see what comes up. And there are a number of interesting plans dealing with food and security and food systems, but I don't see Cornell here when I look under organization. So I'm just going to look for Cornell instead, because you can search by keyword, and that includes words from the organization. So actually, here is the plan I was looking for on fruit and vegetable prescription. I just didn't have the title quite right. I would be able to download this plan, check and see the types of information that were included, and then I could maybe use this to help structure my plan. I don't have the ability to copy it and edit it, but I can pull general information from it. Another really helpful area under learning in the DMP tool is this quick start guide. So if you're a person who doesn't necessarily want to read the documentation, but just wants to read a few things to get them started, this is a good resource for that. Although actually, I find the DMP tool to be pretty intuitive, but if you just want a little bit of guidance, this isn't a bad place to look. For more detail, you can click on the data management general guidance document. And this goes into a, a little bit more detail and suggestions on the typical questions that you'll find in the plan and how you can fill out that information. So that's an overview of the DMP tool. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint just to sort of wrap things up here. So remember that you should have a plan to manage your data and to keep your project organized and meet funding requirements. You want to include information on the type of data you'll create in your project, how you'll document that data, and how to keep it safe, and how you'll store that data and share it appropriately with other researchers when your project's completed. Finally, consider using the DMP tool for guidance and templates when you're creating your DMP. If you do use the DMP tool, I invite you to share your plan with your Drexel colleagues. So let me check the chat box to see if there are any questions. Okay, I see a link there. If you do have questions, you can always contact the uh, Research Data Management Group at our email address. We have a link here for research data management support. And I mentioned earlier that there are retention policies from the Office of General Counsel. And here's the link to that information. Are there any questions? OK, thank you so much for coming out. Rachel, I don't know if you wanted to.